today we're working with the Morris, which I know you haven't seen for a long time. To be honest, it hasn't gone anywhere in a long time. It's been sat outside my workshop. A few things I wanted to do before using it, and you know, things like the Pontiac came along, I uh, got the Jag sort of finished, and uh, yeah, it's been a bit neglected. But that's good for the patina. I think you'll agree. She still looks as rusty as she ever did. Today we are fitting a fault gauge, a temperature gauge and a oil pressure gauge. This is purely because um, I have done a lot of work on it and just for peace of mind I think it's quite nice especially in cars like this to have just some gauges to let you know how your engine's doing. At least you can shut it off then if there is a problem before the problem gets too bad. Now things you need, I've had to buy a few bits with this. It came with temperature sensor and the oil pressure uh, transmitter. And what I didn't have is the adapter to go into the coolant hose. Um, I've actually got one of these on the MG Midget and the coolant temperature switch sits in there. Um, that then goes in line with one of your coolant hoses. And I've also bought this adapter so that we can still have the original oil pressure switch screwed in and have the sender as well. So not only do we still get the original oil pressure warning light, we also get the gauge to show us what our actual oil pressure is. So the wiring of this is pretty simple. We've got three bulbs for your backlighting and then each of these you can see you've got a positive, and if you can quite make that out in the camera, there's a positive, a negative and a signal wire. This one here doesn't have a signal wire because that is the volt gauge. So it just needs positive and negative to read the voltage. So it should be fairly simple. I'm going to get the bonnet open. I think we'll get all the sensors wired in and uh, we'll run the wires through into the cab. Then we can mount the gauges. Should be, should be fairly straightforward fit. Okay, so our oil pressure switch is there. Now that's got to come out so that we can wind the adapter in. There we go. That wasn't the easiest thing to undo. but So what we've got to do now is check that that fits our adapter. So I think I'll probably go in there. It's going to make the best. I think I've got the right thread. Yes, I did. Right, I'm not going to put it straight in straight away because I think that that's going to be easier to fit first. We can tighten it up, put a socket on the end of that. Right, found the washer. Didn't go too far. And now it's got to find the hole. That's what she said. So that's that fitted. Uh, so next on my this. The only other sensor which I've got to fit is the temperature sensor. Now, like I said earlier, I have got one of these on the midget. I have, I will admit, I guessed the size, 32 mil. Uh, holding up there, I think the outside diameter of that pipe is 34, 35, I think I worked it out to be. Um, it does look like it'll fit. I should be able to stretch over that. So. I think you can guess what's coming now. I need to cut through that hose. Um, it's going to make a mess on the floor. So I shall grab a drip tray. And then I'll come back to you after I've done the cutting, just in case it doesn't work out. So it's been, I don't know, four or five weeks at least since the last bit of footage you saw. One reason or another, I've not been able to do any more with it, but we're here now, and uh, if I open up the bonnet, you can see that it's pretty much where we left off. Oil pressure switch is still there and not quite connected properly, um, and I have cut the pipe. However, I have got, no, it must be inside, I've got the new uh, connector. Here we are. So we've got Pop that on there. Two Jubilees. And in here, throw it up there on the floor. 
I've got another one of these joiners, 28 mil. It should fit perfectly. They're gonna be still gonna be tight. I'll need to use a little bit of probably get some red rubber grease in there. A little adapter thing for the uh, coolant temperature switch is all in there. And uh, I figured out after a lot of trial and error that this is the only position that you can get the original oil pressure switch in with that adapter. You can get longer adapters, so I highly recommend if anyone is going to do this job, get a longer adapter because um, it just makes it easier to put the original pressure switch in. And then that sender should just screw in like so. Perfect. We'll nip that up in a moment. So this, this goes in there like so and we'll basically send the temperature signal to the gauge. Now on the side of this block you've got a little allen key here. Um, that is I believe for cars that have a two wire sender so it would um, ground itself through the, the housing. Um, so you can then use a single terminal uh, sender with a two wire car wiring loom. Um, we don't need to worry about that because we only have the one wire. As far as wiring goes, I believe it's one to the oil pressure switch, one or two to the temperature switch. I think it's only one, I'll double check. Yeah, one from the battery so that we can power up. That will give us our voltage reading for the voltmeter and it will give us our backlight. I might end up, because I haven't got the switch for the backlighting on the instruments working, there's a little switch that normally sits down the bottom here, because uh, that doesn't work on this one, I might just permanently have them illuminated. Okay, so we've got a few options here. Uh, in a perfect world, you'd mount it there. Um, I don't quite like that because there's a curve to this, slight curve, it leaves a gap. Uh, if I go there, be good but I'm gonna to have to bend the whole thing oh well, maybe not it is actually 90 degrees um, so I think that's probably gonna be the best bet obviously there is supposed to be a cubby hole here which I don't have so at some point I'll have to buy one and um, other option I suppose we could go there but then it's in the way of the demister could go there in the way of the heater controls there would work oh, let's see that kind of like that actually still see them pretty clearly from behind the steering wheel. Uh, hmm. Yes. I think we're going to go there. There's even a screw hole we can use. I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of behind there. Yes, I think we're going to do that. Uh, which means I don't need to do too much with the gauges. Looking at wiring. I think I've said this earlier in the video, um, positive and negative, which is just to give you battery reading. Uh, this one here has positive, negative, and a signal. That is the temperature gauge. So the signal wire is the only one we need. Um, again, positive and negative. We can just um, like bridge these. Uh, and the same with the oil pressure. So we've only really got to want run two wires into the car and the battery feed. So that's going to be pretty simple. So I'm going to go and find some wire and uh, we'll get some ring terminals on there. I might find a screw. Um, I can show you now, I haven't got that. There's a screw hole there. That's what we're going to try and use for now. Well, obviously we'll put other screw holes in it, but just to hold it up while we do all the wiring and stuff, we're going to do that. All right, so I've got a handful of ring terminals. Annoyingly, these aren't as small as the ones I'd like. Um, I've only got one really tiny one which will fit the gauges and then all the others have got to be these bigger ones but we can still make them work. Um, this here is a bucket full of wires. Uh, this is all the wires that came from the midget conversion that were left over and a few others that I've added in. So I'm going to fish out two different colour wires so I know which one's for the oil pressure, which one's for the temperature as I run them through. Um, and if I haven't got enough red wire here to do the positive side, I have got a new reel in the workshop. Um, all right, here we are. I've made a little grommet. I need to do a bit of a better job. Made a little grommet out of some insulation tape. 
both wires have come through i've got to hook up blue one to the temperature the pink one to the oil pressure and uh, in the little bag that came with the, with the gauge kit you had you have another little bag with some washers and nut and uh, some nuts um, so don't undo nuts that are on the back of here you know, add new ones onto it uh, so I'm going to hook them on and then we're going to try and find an ignition feed from in here and then we'll be able to ground it out in here and uh, we should be able to get all the gauges working um, what I'm thinking of doing is doing a little loop for the positive sides uh, to save on having loads and loads of wires just do a little short one to there another short one to there and then another one that will go straight off to uh, whatever we use as our uh, uh, live and ground uh, so I'll crack on with that and hopefully they'll all work right it is all in looking good from a driver's point of view you can sort of see the gauges there um, only one wire left to do this is the main feed which I haven't stripped the end of yet right what I'm going to do with this is hook it onto back here you've got the little headlight switch that the switch doesn't work but the wiring is all there so i'm going to plug that into there that should give us an ignition feed um i've topped off the coolant yes i haven't put the cap on it so coolant's all topped off so i've chucked the cap back on oh the right way around so you can read the writing um I haven't run it yet, so I don't know if any of it's going to leak or not. So let me hook that wire on and we'll give it a go. Okay, that is all wired in. Now I'm not sure, uh, let's try to find out if I put the ignition on. Yeah, none of those move. So if I put the light switch on, hey, it powers up. Look at that. So you can see the voltmeter's reading just over 12 volts it's about battery voltage and if I turn start her up I shouldn't need much choke oh starts well oil pressure jumps straight up to three <laughs> voltage is showing just about 13 and a bit I'll try and get you to a position you can see it that's working fine right well, that all works well. So while we wait for the uh, temperature gauge to warm, let's just check for leaks. So the one I was most concerned about was oil pressure. Um, there's no nothing dripping out of there. Uh, oh, we've got a bit of a leak. Oh, that's just coming from the overflow. Okay, that's just where I've topped it, overfilled it. Oh, my indicator's on. So um, yeah, shouldn't take too long to warm up. Um, I might shut the bonnet. Sounds good. First time I've run the car for quite a while. Um, let's move that. Move the tools. I might go for a. Might go for a cheeky drive around the estate. Right. Mind me Peugeot. Voltage is reading just over 14 now, which is good. Oh, brakes still work, that's also good. Here we have our overflow car park for work. It's just been resurfaced, but not opened yet, which is a tad annoying. That's why we've got so many cars in our car park outside the garage. Just let them come down, because I know where they're going. We're in the way. Nicely. 
Engine's running absolutely sweet as. We've still not got any temperature. Right, well done those of you who have been screaming at your phones, computer, TV screens. You probably pointed out that little screw there that I said, oh, I don't know if I need it or not. It is needed. That's how the sensor grounds out. So I've loosely grounded it out there. I thought I'd test you all. I do, did actually know about that because I've got that same lock in the midget. So that's my excuse. Um, but if I do that now, you can see that we are just over. If I start her up. Should be able to see it, it rising. And all of a sudden she goes up very quickly. <laughs> So yeah, that's um, all good. We got, well, as you can see, we're just warming up pretty quick now. Um, and we got oil pressures at about, I think that's, is that one bar? Seems a bit low, but um, we've got no oil pressure warning light on, so it must be about normal. And when we rev it, she does pick up, so driving will be fine. It's charging about sort of 30 or just under 14 to just over 14 so i'm happy with that all the signs look good um oh, i think my my wires come off so i have to do something more permanent there but thank you all for watching if you want to fit one of these i'll put all the links to the bits i used in the description box below um it yeah you can literally fit it to any car they also do different gauges so you can get fuel gauges and boost gauges and uh, I don't know, all sorts. You can get different pods that come up the side here if you're some kind of BMW or Corsa owner. Um, yeah, um, the theory is all exactly the same, so it works pretty much with any car. Thank you for watching, and I shall see you next time.